People always ask why programming is so important in hacking, and the honest answer is because without programming, you don't actually understand what you're attacking, you're just pressing buttons, pasting payloads, hoping an alert one pops up. Right now, I am in a legally vulnerable website, this is a port swicker lab, and the reason I know even where to look is because I understand how this search feature or this feature was coded, how the data flows, and where the developer messed up. And if you actually want to learn hacking like this, I run game hacking, API hacking, and a bug bounty course. All folks focused on understanding the systems before breaking them instead of memorizing some random tricks on websites. And heads up, my bug bounty course is getting a massive update soon, and anyone who has already got it or gets it in the next 7 days will have access to programming for hackers course for completely free. It's going to be bundled within this course and it's going to be about programming for hacking, and it's coming out very soon. If you're serious about hacking, this is literally the smartest move and the smartest investment you can make. If not, that's totally fine. You can still watch videos and hope to pick something up. So what is this ominous vulnerability I'm talking about from the introduction? Well, those who know how to code will immediately spot it, but don't worry, I'll still explain it to the best of my abilities. And all of this can be found in my up and coming course. So let's get with the video. First of all, what I like to do is we're looking for a client side vulnerability. I mean, it basically tells you that there is a DOM access here, but don't look at that. We can inspect element this page and go to sources, uh, content unavailable. So we have to refresh this, go to index. And here is the source code of the web application. If we scroll down, you can see that there is some JavaScript, which is always interesting. So let's actually debunk this talk you through what this code does and how you can also debug it and everything in depth can be found on my up and coming course. So first of all, we have a add, event, add an event listener to a window, which is expecting a message. And of course, this is going to be a post message and it can be sent from another tab. First of all, it doesn't check the origin here, which means that there is a vulnerability. So the first line here is iframe and it does a document.create element, of course, and it's an iframe. And then an ACME player is set to be essentially the iframe, which we just created. And, a pen, and also we do a, a pen child to iframe, which means that we essentially put it to the document here, to body of this document right over here. Okay, perfect. And then we have a try block. And this is very interesting and very simple. There's a D variable and we call JSON parse on e.data. Now what e.data is, well, essentially you see here E is defined and e.data is going to be whatever data this message, or uh, this event listener receives when it receives a message from post message. Otherwise, if it doesn't get anything or if it doesn't find that, it is going to return an error and silently error out. Now we see a switch. Switch right over here is something like an if statement. I know a lot of people are going to be like, blah, blah, blah. okay, this is just for the beginners for me to explain this. Take a look at this like an if statement. And this is basically if that do this, if the type is that do this, and if the dot type is that do that. Essentially, that's it. And there's also a default case, which means like an else statement. So this is all ifs. Anyways, d.type, if the d.type is page load, we're going to say e c a c m e player element that's curl into view. Okay, nothing interesting. We see if the d.type is load channel, which is looking interesting. I'm not going to lie. It is a c m e player dot element dot src equals d url. Oh, this is our point of interest. See, load channel, if d.type or what we essentially send is going to be JSON. And if there is a type key and the, that type key holds a value called load channel, it's going to essentially set a SRC to this iframe or source to this iframe, which is going to be d.url. And guess what the URL is? d.url, also what we send here in the E. Okay, so if that's complicated, don't worry. I'll actually show it to you how it works. First of all, let me put up... Um, a little breakpoint here. And let me start breaking this web application. First of all, I have to go to exploit server so I can mangle with it. Let me view exploit and let's actually start trolling this. So there is a way to do this with iframes, but I just prefer to do this with window.open. So first of all, const tab equals window.open that. Click enter. And I believe this should stick in the sources. There is, right, of course, there is my breakpoint. It should stick, okay. And now what essentially we do is tab.post message. And look, if I send a string, if I don't send anything like important, nothing happens here. But in the console, we also don't see anything because it's erroring out silently. So let's send some JSON. Obviously, it calls JSON.parse over here. Hold on. 
So the fact that he calls json.parse, that means it doesn't expect raw JSON data, it expects a stringified JSON data. So what can we send is essentially like this. So JSON dot, oh sorry, JSON dot stringify. And here is where we can put our own malicious JSON. So let's, so what is the website even expecting? Hold on. So what is the website even expecting? It's expecting load channel to be essentially d dot type. Okay, so let's just do that. So type, is going to be load channel and the URL, because if there is load channel in the type, that means we also need to supply the URL and the URL will be something malicious because we are putting this into the SRC, which is on the iframe. So if we put here, for example, JavaScript alert one, this ultimately should work, but let me add a few more breakpoints. So even a breakpoint here. So after we do this, click send. Uh, hopefully this worked. Ah, look at that, paused in the debugger. We can now actually do some messy, messy stuff. Here is, you can see the local variables, kind of the, what, what, what currently is being referenced. And there's this ACME player, which is an iframe, okay? There's the D, which has load channel and URL, of course, alert one. And D dot type, of course, is load channel. So if I single step forward this to the next breakpoint, it takes into this. And essentially, you can here even see it much better. And since we are setting an SRC to D dot URL, what is D dot URL? It's JavaScript alert one. And if I continue, you see an alert one pop up. Nice, that's very neat. So what is the vulnerability here? Well, of course it's XSS. If I actually remove all of these breakpoints and just essentially send this, uh, you just see an alert one, which is very nice. But here's a problem. Currently, li, 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 there is uh, you need to click a button, you need to do all of this bad, bad, nasty stuff. But what do I mean by that? Well, in order for this all to work, a new tab needs to be opened and then we need to submit this data to a new tab. So how can we weaponize this? But also not just that, how can we make sure that this works without a button? If you take a look at this website, if you go to inspect element, go to network, and you essentially refresh the page, go to doc, you can see that this page does not have any security headers at all, including the X frame options, which means I can just copy this website right over here and go back to my exploit, create a new iframe right here, which is going to be a malicious iframe, set this right here, copy the path, go out, click enter. And if you wait a little bit, you can see that this actually works perfectly. So we can iframe this because there is no, this there, there isn't the security header. So now what we can do is we can essentially wait for this iframe to load and just essentially submit this data to this iframe and have an alert one execute right over here. And we can steal the account from the victim. Of course, be ethical and responsible with it. So after we have crafted the exploit, we can essentially show you what the exploit is. This is going to be it. So it's going to load this into an iframe, this malicious page and unload. It will say this dot content window dot post message, and it will post this malicious message, which will call alert one. And the point of this actual lab is to not call alert one. It's just to call print. So we essentially need to, for some reason, do that. I don't know. In order to solve it, we have to do this. So we can copy this, we go back here, put it right over here, store it. And just for the reference, let's click view exploit. And we should essentially see after this page loads a print pop open, like a prompt for us to print something. I hope at least that's what's supposed to happen. I don't know why it's taking ages to load. Dear God, please help. <laughs> and there it is. We see this. Everything is working fine. And we can deliver this exploit to the victim. And hopefully we solve the lab. There you go. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something new. And hopefully you will get the course, which is going to teach you how to do all of this in programming as well. So stay safe, stay responsible. And as always, peace.